Do you need this? So Jill's got, uh, <laughs> Jill's got something to share, a bit of an update. Yeah, on that note. Um, <laughs> I really prayed this morning for a, for a spiritual Valium so that I wouldn't get all weepy on you, but if you know me at all, you know that I'm a weeper, and so this is going to be one of those weepy times. Um, I'm standing up here to let you know that I am redefining my relationship with Eucharist. Um, and that I have handed in my resignation as a pastor to the elders. And so, oh, I'm going to be walking through a time of transition. And I have some things that I want to say about that, and I hope that I can do it in a way that doesn't, you know, when my kids were little, sometimes I'd cry, and they'd be like, Mommy, you're sad. And I'm like, no, I'm not sad. I just have a lot of feelings, and they all look like tears. <laughs> so some of that's going to happen now. And, and they're not all sad, but, um, but I have a lot of emotions. Um, calling, I think, has a funny thing. I don't know your experience of calling in your life. Um, in my own life, I think often discerning calling has mostly just been trying to be attentive to God's nudgings. Very seldom is it big moments of clarity. Mostly it's just taking little tiny steps towards the light at the end of my toe. Um, it's often staring into the abyss of darkness, <laughs> beyond what you can see without much of a clue what's out there. So I just, for those of you that don't know me particularly well, I want to give you just a tiny version of my story up until now. Oh, and I'm shaking, wow. Uh, in 2007, God called me out of a corporate job that I had that I'd been doing for a long time. That moment, that sense of being called out um, was quite sudden and surprising to me. I think that I'd um, actually sensed God, God calling me before in my life, but at that point I had sort of put my hand over my ears and hummed softly to myself. But that time I listened and I left my job with no plan. Eventually, I went to seminary. Who knew I would do that? And then, after wandering around in the dark for more years than I was happy with, I ended up here in a pastoral role at Eucharist. Also quite surprising. And the day that Kevin, who I hardly knew, um, sat down for coffee with me and told me that there was this role that they were creating here, hmm, I knew that this was the job uh, that I had been walking to for a long time. I've been here at Eucharist for, eight, for six years, and I love Eucharist. I love every one of you. I love our quirkiness and our chaos. I don't know if you've noticed, but today was one of those days. <laughs> that beat and are sincere and care a lot about just about everything. I love Kevin. <laughs> Working with him has just been an incredible joy for me. I love our board. I love who he, we have been in the last six years. I love who we are in the Hamilton Church community. I love who we are in the church writ large. I love what we stand for. I, I love what we try to do here. I also need my glasses on. I hope that Eucharist will be my church for a long time to come. I don't plan on leaving this community. I just am stepping away from a pastoral role. So please know that there is nothing wrong. <laughs> There is no scandal, <laughs> nobody's mad, everybody's fine. It's just time for me to move on. If you've been here for a while, you know that uh, three years ago my husband left me and obviously that catalyzed me into thinking about what life holds next for me in kind of all spheres of my life. And then there was a pandemic 
And that wasn't easy, um, but it brought out lots of time for thinking and revisioning. I'm not leaving because I'm burned out. I'm not leaving because of the pandemic. I've been chewing on this piece for a long time. A year ago, I joined a group of pastors discerning what the third third of life might look like for us. And as we talked about calling, the leader invited us to consider how God has called us in the past as an indication of how he might be calling us now. And I realized that God calls me out of things before he calls me into them, which sucks. <laughs> but it has felt increasingly true in this last season for me. I'm not sure what's next for me. I'm not going to anything. But it's clear to me that I can't figure out that next thing that God has in mind for me until I leave this role and give some time for things to settle. And so that's what I'm going to do. And I want you to know that I'm also completely clear that this decision is the right one for Eucharist. There have been so many signs, particularly in this last year, that God is birthing new and exciting things here. So many pieces have fallen into place in that creepy way that God does stuff. We have you coming back to in-person church, and that's so great. And we have so many new folk. There's some of you that are like, well, who cares if she's leaving? I don't even know who she is. <laughs> it's a good time for new eyes and new visions and new voices. Uh, and I, it, it, um, Brian Henley is a member of our community who doesn't attend in person um, and hasn't for a while, but maybe he's here today, I don't know. And, and he, in the last week, sent me uh, an article from what this used to be Victoria Baptist Church. And in March of 1895, Reverend Tapscott uh, resigned from his position as the pastor here. And it was so interesting to me, God's timing. And just, um, it, it was so funny because they talked about him coming to an unattractive building in an unattractive area of town. <laughs> like 130 years. It's interesting. But I also had this like incredible sense of, of being just a little piece of 130 years of worship in this building, that one of the things that's so amazing about this space, if you come into it, is the feeling of knowing that, that we, in this tiny season, are just one little tiny piece of the history of what has gone on before and what will go on after us. And, and that is, that gives me comfort. That gives me comfort that, um, there is still so much to happen here. It's all a bit frightening for me. Eucharist has tethered me in my life for the last three years in particular, but I know that God has a plan, and I know it's a good plan. I'm not always fond of the idea of calling because for a long time in my life, I thought that God was going to call me into things that were awful, <laughs> that it was something would be terrible, that I would hate that he would make me do hard things that I didn't want to do. But I have learned in my life that that's not true. He called me here. And I know that he has good things next for me. Mm. 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 So there you go. <laughs> I know that the elders um, will talk a little bit about the next steps, but please also know that my plan is to be here for however long I need to be here. I go away in the summertime, so I'll be gone for a bunch of weeks in the summer, but that's normal. That's what I do every year, and I'll probably be back here in the fall. Um, and so, yeah, just so you know that this isn't like, by now I'm out the door. I'm Claire. I am the chair of our board of elders here at Eucharist, and so I am speaking on behalf of the group. Um, 
wanting you to know that as Jill mentioned, this is something that we have known about uh, for a while and been talking about in our meetings um, for the last little while in preparation for this moment and then all of the moments to come in the wake of, of Jill sharing this with us. Um, yeah, and just wanted to speak to the process because as Jill mentioned, I think amidst our community here in the space and on Zoom and those of, uh, those of I guess, us uh, who aren't um, participating in this morning's service, we land in a lot of different places in terms of our history with Eucharist, whether today's the first day or whether you've been here since before Jill joined us. And so news like this can land in a lot of different ways based on how you participate in this community. And so just wanted to say a few words to just honor Jill <laughs> in having the courage to do something so vulnerable, vulnerable and invite us into that in such a vulnerable way. Um, but also to validate you, um, you, those who aren't here, <laughs> um, in feeling however this news lands in your body and in your spirit and in yourself and wanting to give time and space for that to land because Jill has had a remarkable impact on this community. Words really can't articulate that and we will get there when it comes to celebrating Jill and, and thanking Jill later in this season of change for us. But for now, really wanting to just honor um, the impact of this news um, and to let you know that for today, we're really just going to kind of be in that Together, we do have a plan as elders and we are gonna invite the community into that over the next couple weeks in terms of what the next steps will look like around Jill's role and around transitioning Jill out of her current role. Um, and so if you have questions about that, I'll be around after the service, you can talk to us as elders, but also know over the next several weeks, more information will be shared with the community that will likely answer a lot of the questions that you do have. But for, day, for today, just really wanting um, to be in this news and information with Jill and to honor her and the courage of sharing that with us and to pray with and for her in the wake of her sharing that with us. So I invite you to pray. I'll lead us in some prayer. Come here. God, we thank you for Jill. And we thank you for truth and the truth that you are and the ways in which you stir in our spirits and in our stories to invite us into truth. Even if it makes us really shaky. And we thank you for her courage um, and your spirit of discernment that has allowed her to bring this before us today and say yes um, to what you are so clearly inviting her into. And we thank you for this time um, in the wake of the Easter story and also in the season of spring, um, we are just surrounded by death and resurrection and we are surrounded by new life and the reminder that new things require endings. And so we just ask you to continue to be upon Jill with a spirit of courage, um, but also upon us uh, in trusting you as we have throughout this whole story and as your people have throughout your whole story in letting go of things when it's time to let them go so that our hands may be open to what you're doing that is new. And we just surrender to you and to that spirit and we thank you for the newness that will grow and ask that you would be near to us as we grieve and as we maybe fear and have questions and feel uncertain or feel excited, God, in all of the ways that we can feel in everything that our bodies may go through in curiosity and uncertainty. We ask that you would meet us there and help us to trust you. And we pray for Jill, we pray for Kevin, pray for Nina and the board, and all those who kind of help steward the resources of this community and um, the church that you have called us to be and ask that we would make decisions in accordance with your will, in, in accordance with what is true and what is good, and that has little to do with our desires to control things, God. Um, so yeah, I just pray for everyone who's gathered here this morning. Um, yeah, that you would be both that peace that transcends understanding, but also the willingness to feel uncomfortable um, and to be reminded that we are in this together as we, yeah, look to what is new and celebrate Jill and just love her in this period of transition. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. <laughs>